Oh Jesus, this hair. I gotta do something with it. Okay. She, well. she usually blames me. So she could probably blame you there. Huh? She's like, how do you let me out of the house with my hair like this? Or, oh, is that what I do? Outfit. Hey guys, it is June 11th. This is vlog number three of my World Series of Poker journey towards trying to win a bracelet. And I am actually here in San Diego, my home. I left Vegas for a couple of days. And look, I just made dinner for everyone. My husband's here, my little sister's here, pet my dog. And Timo, AKA Johnny Vibes, and his wife Olga are coming over. And I just really quickly wanted to record this intro because I've been playing so much and honestly vlogging takes a super long time But I had all of this footage from my last vlog that I didn't include in it Which addresses a question that a ton of you guys have been asking which is okay once I have my dream clear What are the next steps? How do I take action? And what are the things that stop me? So sorry I didn't have like a sweet intro But actually let me see if I can shoot one here real quick So this dream, the odds are clearly not in my favor. I checked with Kev Math. What would you say my percentage of, or likelihood that I would win a bracelet? For you, I'm gonna say you have like about 0.8 to 1% chance of winning a bracelet. Nice, so you're saying there's a chance. Yes. Sir. Okay, what about if I played every summer for the next 60 years? Take a 3% chance. 3% in 60 years? Yeah, I think Shit, I think. man. Three percent? Three percent in 60 years? Come on. But regardless of the odds, I always ask the question of, at the end of your life, would you regret it if you didn't go for it? If you didn't try? And if the answer is yes, Screw the odds! But here's what tends to happen. You finally admit you have this dream or you know that even in the end, you will regret it. And yet the reason you don't go for it is because your head starts to get filled with all the excuses and stories about why not. And the big three, are you ready for them? The three big ones are, I don't have time, I don't have money, and I'm not good enough. And those three things over and over in your head will lull you into inaction, no risk. So in January, when I finally was like, yes, I want to win a WSOP bracelet. And then of course, the committee of those three things was like, but you don't have time, money. Like, how are you going to do this? But what I know from doing my own personal development work and coaching people is that you will always find someone with the same or even worse circumstances doing pretty much exactly what you want. It's like, think about the single mom who is working three jobs and going to night school, finally gets her degree, starts her business, and is super successful, right? That story happens all the time. So I put those excuses aside and I said, okay, if I want to win a WSCP bracelet, what do I have to do? Well, first of all, I have to play tournaments. I have to play bracelet events. And then I was like, oh, well, I don't have the money to just fire in all these events. And even if I did, I don't know if I'm ready. I don't know if I'm good enough. I haven't worked on my tournament game. So what do I need to do? Who do I need to be to make this happen? I was like, okay, so if I don't have the money right now, how do I make it? And what are the other possibilities? Always ask yourself, like, what are other possibilities? You are never out of options. So I decided I was going to make a World Series of Poker package. So I looked at all of the events that I felt like I had a good shot and I could play and that the buy-ins, even if I added them up and had people invest in me, wouldn't be over the top since this is my first year really going for and doing it.
And by the way, I'm going to be talking about how to make the impossible possible using the example of poker and poker staking. But if you aren't familiar with poker, I'll make it relatable because these principles are true for any endeavor. So I wanted to play lower buy-ins, big field, high value tournaments. So I made a list of all the ones that I wanted to play. I tallied up the number in buy-ins and then I asked myself how big of a percentage do I want to keep of myself and how much percentage am I willing to sell? And for me, that number was 60%. The number of buy-ins that I have is around 30,000. For me to keep 60% of myself, I would need to put up $18,000 of my own money and acquire the other $12,000 from other people who invest. So for example, if someone wanted to buy 5% of my action, that would be $1,500. That's what it would cost. So they would risk that $1,500 because if I don't cash in any tournaments, they're gonna lose that money. However, if I win a million dollars, they're gonna get 5% of a million dollars in exchange and in return for their investment. Now players often choose to use markup also. So instead of charging the flat exact fee of however much percentage would cost or however much the percentages of buy-in, they'll mark it up a little bit. And the reason that players do this is because they feel like they have a big, big edge over the field. Usually the higher the edge, the bigger the markup, the lower the edge, like maybe if it's a tournament with all pros, the lower the markup. And of course, this can apply in business. If you're like, I want to start my business, but it's going to require $10,000 in startup money. I can't do it. No. What are the other possibilities? Could you trade some kind of value with someone who can help you or, or you get investors? There's always possibilities. Don't let I don't have money stop you from going for whatever your dreams are, but it's scary. I created this $30,000 package. And then of course I have to ask someone to invest in me. And that is such a scary and vulnerable thing. So I asked myself, okay, how do I make sure I am worth investing in and that I feel comfortable asking someone to do so? I need to become the best player I can be. Remember, I'm not good enough. Okay, so what's it going to take? Who do I need to be? Because I'm not just about this like woo woo, think po hashtag positivity or like the secret, like let me just think about winning. No, bull, it takes action. It takes you every day asking, who do I need to be to have this happen? For me, that was finding a tournament masterclass to study for months, which I did, which taught me so many concepts in poker that I had been dragging my feet to learn. That was putting in way more hours playing, so playing cash games, pushing myself to become the best player I can be. And what ended up happening was I started moving up stakes because I was putting all that work in and hours and getting better. And of course, I need to play tournaments. So I actually ended up playing the World Series of Poker circuit at the Bicycle Casino, applying everything I had learned up to that point. And she does oh, wow. not get it. Unlucky for Christy, got it in good, uh, an action flop, and Tom Brabond is going to bust Christy Arnett in fourth place and everybody's going to get a nice pay jump. It's a huge pay jump as well. I think that and I placed fifth for $55,000 and that gave me so much experience and definitely more fuel for the summer. And then that other excuse of time, I don't have time. I started letting go of some of the not as important priorities I had had in my life to create more time to play and to study. And I also had to say no to things. Like I said no to going to Coachella. I said no to some things that sounded exciting, but that weren't in line with the priorities I had set for myself because when you have a big yes inside you, you've got to say no to other things because if you say yes to them all, you're saying no to the thing that's really important. And since I'd been playing and moving up, I also had the biggest month I've ever had at once. I've made more money leading up to the World Series than I had all of 2017. So really hear this, like it's not just about the dream and going for it, making it or not. It's who you become along the way, what you get to experience 
and learn about yourself along the way that makes it worth it. Because I promise you, every lesson that you learn is worth the battle. And so, and then it came time to do the scary part, which is put your ass on the line and really put it all out there. So I had the package and then I needed to do this scary thing, which is ask people to invest in me. And I'm like, man, I just, I, I'm not sure what people will say. And I actually, as a, you know, I've coached people and I, I, I can see this in people's language and I did it and I didn't even realize I was doing it, but I said, I texted in my f- poker friend group. We've had this group for like uh, eight years and they're some of my best friends. Uh, but I, I said, I'm thinking about, which that was just trying to free roll myself in case nobody wanted to invest in me. I was like, oh, I was just like, just thinking about it. I wasn't really gonna do it, it's no big deal if nobody says yes. So I said, I'm thinking, which is bullshit, by the way, don't do that. I'm thinking about selling a 30K package for the World Series of Poker. And then I gave him the details and I waited. And that bit of time is something that if you go for your dreams, you're always gonna have to experience. It's that space between what you want and who you're afraid to find out you are if you don't make it or if no one believes in you. You know what I mean? Like it was excruciating waiting to see if anybody would be interested. I was like, and all my thoughts filled just like, uh, oh, nobody wants to buy this. this is terrible. Like I'm so stupid. Like this, my dream is stupid. I am stupid. Blah, blah, blah. That was just a microcosm for the whole thing, which is like, can you be with yourself? Can you be okay starting small? Can you be okay failing along the way? Can you be okay having people watch you struggle? Can you be with that long enough to give yourself a real shot at what you want? I mean, that is the the thing, right? So in that moment, I was like, oh God, they all think it's stupid. And then one of my friends said, I'll take 2%. I was like, oh yes, okay, yeah, great. That's a start. Then another one was like 1%, 2%. Then one friend said 5%. And then another one of my friends said, I'll take whatever you have left. And later he even texted me and was like, thanks for the opportunity for letting me invest in you. I know you've been working really hard and I think this is your year. And that just felt so good. Like he saw that I had been working so hard. And, and I had been, and it made a difference. All right, that's it for the footage I wanted to show you guys. But basically, to wrap things up, when you get clear on your dreams and your vision, people can't help but want to be a part of it. And what's true for me is actually I'm just feeling a lot of, a sense of big sense of responsibility too, which is that I wanna work really hard, I wanna do my best, and right now I'm taking you know, just a little bit of a break um, to refocus and get go back in hard. And, and I wanna make sure I do my best for my family. My family, you're my family. We still love me no matter what. I'm just really excited and happy to be a part of this with you. And I know that so many of the people that have invested in you feel the same way. We all just wanna be a part of someone putting themselves out there and going for their dreams. And that's what we're all a part of now. Yeah, thank you. And you guys are too. And I'm just really grateful again for all of your messages and support. And yeah, love you guys. Dinner's over and we're gonna relax now. We'll be back. Probably maybe for another vlog from San Diego. Hmm, I'm not sure. Alexa, no one's hmm. talking to you. Hmm, I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs>